Well, good morning, everybody. Hello. Welcome to Zoo Adventures. So your team today is Leslie hanging out in front of the camera. Well, Steve's going to be in front of the camera today. Yeah. And then? Chelsea's behind the camera. Yay, Yay Chelsea. Yay, Wonderful Leslie. Chelsea video videographer extraordinaire. Um, so we're here at the desert habitat. Why? It's we're so hot. <gasps> okay, okay. It's hot. Yes, because we're going to be talking about desert animals, but specifically okay. lizards. Lizards? Today. In lizards the desert. Today. Mm -hmm. Okay, what you got? So we're going to go in, kind of see some of the lizards that call the desert home. Okay. We're also going to kind of throw out some cool information about how we take care of, out of these uh, lizards. Wow, okay, cool. And then I believe we're going to be meeting up with Dr. Minter and some of the vet techs and, and residents and students to help out one of our favorite lizards, oh. which is one of our education lizards, um, the blue tongue skink, right? Sounds can, perfect, can right? Can do a heart? <laughs> <laughs> So, it's a great day. It does. It's going to be a great day. I'm super excited. You ready to go on in? You are a lizard person, so let's yes. see what we got. Here's more lizards for you, Leslie. All the lizards. You are a lizard person. I do. I love them. Make it happen. Who are we you looking at first? See, so Chelsea is has a real nice zoomed in shot of a giant plated lizard. Wow. Known as a plated lizard because it's scales kind of look oh, really flat. Kind of flat, yeah. Kind of like plates, right? <clears throat> right? Right. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah, that's right. Yes, they're flat. Like he flat. looked at it and he was like, Steve, Steve you're supposed to answer. Answer the question, Stephen. <laughs> um, so earlier you were talking to me about how, like, how do we tell the difference between, like, crocodiles yeah, and Yeah, you said, hold on a second. I got a really good animal to share it with you. Right. You so this is what we're going to talk about? That's one, one thing I want to talk about. Sweet. Especially because this one, honestly, does look very much like It does like look an alligator. And you say that there's ways to tell the difference. There is. So okay. One of the ways to look is at their face. Their face. Um, a lot of lizards don't have super long snouts. Okay. Um, but some do. Like this one has a pretty nice, decent snout. But it, where the eyes and the nose are is really important. And oh, like on their head. Okay. So crocodilians, like yeah. your alligators, your crocodiles, your gharials or gharials, your caimans. Yep. They have eyes further up on the top of their head, and then their nose holes are literally like right on the top of their snout. And these guys are a little bit more on the side -ish. More on the side and then more in the front. Okay. Um, they may still look like on top, but they're still more towards like the front of the I face see. rather than truly all the way on top. Okay. Um, and so, so that's one of the ways. Do you know why crocodilians have their eyes and nose like that? The only thing I can think of is their habitat. They're more kind of aquatic-y, more watery yeah. species, where these guys might be living more on the land. Right, and how do crocodilians hunt? How do they hunt? They are, they're very camouflaged. They're kind of under yeah. the water, oh. sneaking up on their prey. For sure. And when they get close enough, they kind of erupt out of the water to try to catch whatever's there. Right, and one way to camouflage really well is only to have to get a tiny wow. bit of your okay. face out of the water. So being able to just put their eyes just above mm -hmm. their nose, okay. They're able to just skim the surface oh. of the water. <laughs> oh, there goes uh, your mastix. Your mastix is like, what's going on? I want to talk about me too. <laughs> <laughs> so we have our uh, Euromastix friend over here, which will show another one that's a little bit more brightly colored um, in a oh, second. Took off, took off running. <laughs> um, oh, well then, we'll, maybe we'll take off running too. Did we want to go walk over here to this other ornate Mad Euromastix? skills, mad skills, Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's talk about this one is really pretty. So this, You walked in and saw that one right away. This one, this Euromastix is got that really bright colors on it. Yep. It's, um, they're called ornate Euromastics and absolutely beautiful. You could see the other one that we saw earlier with a little bit less bright yeah, color. Kind of so you, different, different colors, um, you can tell, but still pretty good at camouflaging. I was over here with a guest a couple of seconds ago. And, well, not a couple of seconds ago, but a little while ago. <laughs> and he was literally pointing at it, asking me what it was, and I could not see it. <laughs> I was like looking someplace else. Well, it must be a he, lizard he was, or was something. Pointing right at it. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so yeah, I mean, they, they even though they're kind of brighter colors, they you do know, still kind of blend was. in. And um, we also do have um, 
Gorongosa, which I, I don't know if that's exactly how you say it, but Gorongosa girdled lizards in here. I think that's right. They're pretty small, so they're a little bit harder and they hide a lot. Um, they're a little bit harder to see. But one of the ways that I always know you're a mastix um, is that. because they have really heavily like armored tails. Their scales. Oh, I can see it. Their scales on their tails are just like super like sharp looking and, and kind of larger than the rest of their body. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the tail is another way that you can tell an alligator and a lizard apart. Wait, wait, so there's even more, so there's more than just the eyes and more the nostrils? More than just the eyes, yeah, and the nostrils. Really? So what about the tail helps you tell the difference between the two? All right, so if you look at all these lizards' tails, I don't know if you can see them super well. Um, he's not showing it off at us right now. I bet now. you can on his plate But they're, they're kind of round all the way, the whole way down. They're kind oh, of round. Okay. Yeah, I can see it on this um, one. With alligators, I always say it almost looks like somebody took the back and then smashed it between their hands. Oh, it and is so flatter. it's real, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. a lot flatter at the okay. end. Um, and but flatter like up, not flat down, not yeah, like yeah. vertically versus horizontal. Yeah, thank you. Those are the you words are. vertically are. versus <laughs> horizontally. So that's another way that you can tell them apart pretty easily. Wow, here comes um, another. I don't know if you guys can see it. You know, your mask is coming up. Yeah, you'll get a good view of both of them right next to each other. You can definitely see the color difference here. Mm -hmm. Just different between animals. And they're soaking up sun. Um, Absolutely. They are ectotherms or, or cold-blooded. That ectotherm. Look at you is, with your wonderful science terms. Thank you. Um, that's the more sciencey word for it. But if you say cold-blooded, everybody knows what you mean too. Right? So, um, so they need that bright light to absorb um, the rays and get the heat so that they can go about their daily life. Yep. Um, and that's one of the reasons why this Benefit is of the such dome. a great I dome. Get it. Yeah. Get it. It's bright light that you can that's bring awesome. in, but. If we need to, we can provide excess heat and and UB UV UV UA UB UVB UVA UV UVA UB awesome. I'm I'm having a real hard time saying things today. <laughs> um, all the letters, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> way to provide that for them through lamps. Yep. And so if you ever come to the zoo and you're looking in there and it kind of looks like something where you're like, oh, why is that there? Chances are that's covering up one of those heating that's lamps right. or those um, those special ray lamps. So if you if Chelsea, you want to show this um, stump over here, that's actually stump. a stump that was created by our design team. And oh, shot, underneath it is lighting for the animals. Like a UVB lighter or something mm -hmm. like that? Yeah. Or a heat bulb maybe? It could be anything like heat bulbs or a UVB. Okay. UVA. I would say UVA. I love it. Because I love UVA. Anyways. <laughs> you would love UVA. Hey, hey, UVA. Shout out. Shout out to UVA. Thank nice you. That's stuff. where I was born. So. <laughs> um, so lizards. And there's so much is done in, in the building, in the dome itself, to help with the care of the lizards. Yeah. So let's go over to another section and I'll tell you even more about that. Really? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. So, so you want, oh, sorry. No. You wanted to stop here? I did because Why? I wanted to show and talk a little bit about like the whole habitat for these lizards. Oh, okay. So you can see, tell me some things that you see in there. See? Uh, okay. I see, I see the animals. Mm -hmm. uh, I see some really cool plants. Mm -hmm. um, I see water. Mm -hmm. I see like a little bridge over there, maybe okay. with a cave. I see a wonderful cave looking structure over here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a lot of little, oh, there's a neat little, oh yeah, great point. Yeah, there's little places to walk down here maybe, open sand. Mm -hmm. No yep. like big trees, nothing. No big trees. More like nothing shrubberies. To climb up. Right. Um, yeah. So that's one thing that's really awesome about our all of our habitats is they're there and created in a way that's best kind of reflective of where those the animals that they're from, um, their habitat is. So here, desert animals living in the desert. Yep. So they are. Um, Lots of sand, so you can see lots yeah, of sand like in there. That. Yeah, makes, there, makes sense. There are trees. There's trees and, and cactus and plants in the desert, but they're just not massive, usually. Gotcha. Um, or they're able to retain water very well. And then, like you said, all these great little like places where the animals can hide. A lot of desert animals are very thin. Mm -hmm. They may be long. They may be wide, but they're not like tall. Okay. So I mean, look at these lizards, right? They're that blue tongue snake right there. That's a pretty 
large lizard. Yep. But he's very thin. He's like very flat to the ground. Gotcha. And that's, and even the other lizards, um, like the one right here that we have. Um, that's, that's a spiny tailed monitor? Spiny tailed monitor, yeah, I believe. Whew. Spiny tailed monitor coming to say hello. Um, so they're that shape so they can Looks fit like he, in sorry, tiny like little something. crevices, maybe. Did he catch something, Chelsea? Can you see in his mouth? I don't know. What's his, I mean, we do feed them. Interesting. You may not always see the food out here, but true, true. They, they are fed. Um, okay. And sometimes it's salads if it's an animal that's more oh, really? omnivorous okay. and stuff like that. But if it's an animal that eats meat, then they're going to have to put meat in there as well. Mm -hmm. um, and But all of these little places for them to kind of get respite or to go away from the... I know I'm using big words today, right? <laughs> respite. Respite. Um, that's what, actually one of my favorite words, respite. I would like to take a respite. <laughs> Wouldn't we all? Uh, ready? Nice. Okay, we took our rest uh, <laughs> So, since we do, like I said earlier, had have, have this nice big dome that the light yeah, can yeah. come in, creating these little areas for them to go and hide so they're not in the direct sunlight is really important to them. And that can be like the big caves that you see. Yeah, absolutely. Or also it could just kind of be these tiny little areas like right down there in the rock where it's just enough room. For one animal. For one animal to scooch under there. Nice. So the habitats are specifically designed There's for the, the animals. Oh, there it is. Yep, kind of snuck up underneath mm -hmm. that log. But the habitats are designed exclusively and specifically with the animals' needs in mind. Yeah. Love it. Based on their habitat, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And you, we have a blue tongue skink here. Right. So we have a blue tongue skink here. That's and, this one on the far right, the um, big one. He's a pretty he she. I don't know which uh, if it's male or female. Yep. Um, um, so it. The skunk over there, or it is. Or skink. Excuse me. I said skunk, didn't you sure I? Did. <laughs> the skink <laughs> over there. <laughs> I mean, it has stripes like a skunk, right? Oh, good point, yeah. The skink over there um, is very similar and kind of, we have to understand it just like the skink that is in the education area. Right. And Zink, our education skink, has kind of been showing some differences in his back. Mm -hmm. um, and we have to be able to, if we see anything different going on with these animals, like say if an animal's not using its leg very well, right. or it just looks like it's not moving well, it's kind of what we would consider to look like it's painful for him to move. Right. Or kind of use Based it. on behavior. Based on behavior, yeah. like. Um, then we can take them to the vet and kind of get them checked out to see what's going on, which we did with the education skink. We sure did. Yeah, we did that. Yeah. And we're going to be, uh, hang on for a second, we're going to be taking you to that exam on Zinc the Skink. Mm -hmm. Watch this. So we're now looking at a Zinc, the blue tongue skink. There's a little bit of a challenge in his back. So he came up to be x rayed, looked at, examined. So why did you decide to bring Zinc up to the hospital today? Um, so Zinc already has uh, previous back issues that we know about. So he gets acupuncture every week. Does he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when he went up for acupuncture that morning, I noticed that his back was a little bit more lumpy looking than normal. And then our acupuncturist also noticed that as well. So okay. we let the vets know. And they were like, okay, well, let's bring him up for radiographs and exam. Mm -hmm. so we'll get it today. Okay, let's run away, cat. Talk to you in a second. One of you heard JB, JB said, time to run away. So we all went into our lead lined rooms, our hidden spaces. You might've seen this from last time we did x-rays. So Vet Tech Kelly's over there getting ready to push go. Let me see Vet Tech Kelly. So JB, Dr. Minter is making sure that Zinc is in the right position for this x-ray. There he is, lo and behold, he's right. And Kelly gives us a clear. Let's go see what's going on. Connect back with Kat real quick. Chelsea, we're all loving it now. Everybody's like, oh, where'd they go? I don't know. It's hard to know what to sell. We've got to make sure that the x-rays are what you need. 
So we're going to set him up for another x-ray. Is there any kind of just Well, sure. Just so I can set up racks so I'm not... Absolutely. Make sure he doesn't run off the table. <laughs> I didn't have them up, but you guys probably didn't hear any of that. <laughs> so this is the blue tongue skink, zinc. Easy to see where he gets his name from. He's a powerful little guy. Where are you going, bud? As an animal master, he can tell so many wonderful stories for us at the North Carolina Zoo. Maybe diet, maybe habitat challenges, maybe an Australian story, because that's where he's from. A defense mechanism story because of that really cool blue tongue. Reptile story. There's a lot of stories he's able to tell. I'm ready for it. Kelly's ready? Okay, <laughs> Vet Tech Kelly, here you go. Hi, friend. So setting him up for his next x-ray. Another one of your challenges, Dr. Mentor, I'm sure, to have an animal stay still who doesn't understand, stay still. <laughs> okay. Run away. Come on, Chelsea. You've done, you've done rehabilitation work before, right, Chelsea? I have. I've done quite a bit. That's what I thought. Any kind of animals in particular you've worked with? Um, a little bit of everything. Um, as far as x-rays, I've pretty much only worked with birds, but okay. um, as general us. rehab, I've done all native uh, North Carolina wildlife. Oh, so. okay. Yeah. Very cool. It's definitely a unique okay. part of animal care. It's, nice. Yeah, it it's is. a lot of fun. Yep. I was going to ask you, enjoy that rehabilitation side of things? I very much enjoy it. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. And I'm sure the animals appreciate your care. Nice speedy wheels. Mentor keeps yeah. running in. Oh, okay, it's a clear call. All right. Everybody comes back in the room. Noise, the noise bubble goes up a little bit. Sharing the information. We'll see if we can finish up our quick conversation with Kat. That's still live. Zinc's here. So sorry about that, Kat. Oh, but we got to break away like that. <laughs> That's um, okay. So we were we were actually in here while they were getting that way. We were hidden while they were getting that way. Yes. Safety. And you were saying that he he, he, he presented with. A little bit of a back problem before, and then in their last acupuncture, he had yeah. some more. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it just looks bigger, a little bit more swollen. Um, he does have some, I think, some spinal disease in that oh, back okay. end. Uh, so that's something that will get progressively worse over time. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just checking to make sure that it's not something really bad. Gotcha. Um, he is already on some pain management for it. Oh, okay. Um, so we might change that up. Or he could also just be a little overweight. Too. <laughs> so, you know, we're taking radiographs to kind of figure out what that is. Gotcha. Um, okay, nice. And it, sometimes it's hard to tell because he has a lot of seasonal behavioral changes too. So, I'm a, it, that's got to be the same with a lot of the critters, isn't yeah, it? So, yeah, that yeah. behavioral thing is something yeah. to think about. And, yep. and these guys have to know how yeah. to deal with that. Yeah. So, like, kind of around this time, he'll not want to eat as much, but he'll be pretty active. I think he's kind of looking for a female. It's breeding season. <laughs> <Well, you know. laughs> so we got to take all that into account, too. Kind of that whole level of care and knowing our animals. Nice, absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah, I yeah, appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. So many things. Let's, let's see where we're going with this. This is so neat. Hang on. So is this what the shots you just got? The radiographs that you yeah. just got on zinc? So these are radiographs that we just got on zinc. Uh, this, this, the blue tongue skink. 
And as you can <laughs> notice, he's got some uh, curvature to his spine that's not really supposed to be there. Um, so this oh, that's curvature. Not okay. No, it's not the way he's sitting. This is this is abnormal posturing and basically abnormal spine formation for him. So he's got some damage to his spine that we we've known about this for some time. Right. Skink the zinc, not the skink. Zinc the skink <laughs> actually undergoes acupuncture therapy. Oh, that's what Cal was saying. That's yep, so yep. neat. He goes under once a week uh, to try to help some of the pain relief that he needs. Because there is some pain associated with this. Sure, yeah. It looks so a little bit wonky. He was having some mobility issues. He was pretty lethargic. He was not really eating well. And th that seems to be helping him. Oh, good. So, wow, neat. So that's uh, kind of nice. So this is kind of a monitoring progress. We, we, we try to get radiographs on him frequently enough so that we can monitor if there's any changes to this. And do we need to have a much much more difficult conversation sure, later. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Does this one look, I mean, I, does it, I don't, and I have no idea what I'm looking like here don't and touch here. It. I'm not going to touch it. Just, don't touch <laughs> it. Um, it's actually touch screen. That's why I said don't touch it. Don't touch the touch screen. Don't touch the touch screen. Uh, then I have to come in and clean the Dr. screen Ruto. off. Can I break um, the expensive <clears throat> But you can actually see some I mean, some of the changes here. I mean, obviously there's some abnormal changes. So there is a little bit there, okay. There definitely is. And you can um, manage this, at this point, you can manage this through we'll the- Manage this through analgesic or pain relief. Okay. Because uh, again, we know he has some underlying pain associated with this, so we're just managing the pain. Okay. And is it, I know this isn't quite the same, but I know uh, as I've gotten older, I have some arthritis in my knees. They say here, taking the, take the leave when you think you might need it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, we, he can't tell us that, so we kind of provide him we provide with that. It. We, we assume that it's the same with those guys, and we, okay. we, we give them the same kind of benefit of the doubt. Nice. And I want to comment on something. You, when we had a Tara, you remember, I hope mm -hmm. you remember yeah, the Tara. I do remember Tara. You, yeah. did, you, you see Bird, yeah, Bird. Yeah, you were saying that the bright white is the more bone, mm -hmm. and that's interesting to see this, because in Tara's, it was that more kind of almost opaque-ish and you were saying that bone shows up brighter, yep. and you can definitely see it here with a with a with a reptile. And you can see like the dark space right here, this really dark black space yep. here. That's his, that's his uh, zinc's lungs. Oh wow! So air shows up really light, really I mean really black, yep. and then bone shows up. The more bone and darker the, the denser the bone, it's going to show a bright white. Okay. Last question for mm -hmm. you is it so? You say you take regular X-rays, kind of making mm -hmm. sure so. Looks kind of similar. It's about static from so what static. I've heard up from last year. So and nothing really isn't a bad thing in this instance. Not at we all. want to, like we wouldn't mind. We don't mind seeing. We don't want to see that at all. Yeah, we don't want to see it. We don't want to see it get worse. Yes. Okay. Sure. Fantastic. Dr. Mirror, thank you so much You're for sharing the X-rays. Okay. Y'all have a good one. We will. Okay. All right. We learned a lot of cool stuff today, didn't we, Steve? We learned some amazing stuff, and I, to be honest, all that cool lizard knowledge you dropped on our to me and our digital friends that was great. And the difference between lizards and crocodiles. Yeah, now you know. That was so much fun. So thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. I, I think one of the coolest parts too, not just learning about lizards, which I love, but also seeing some of the cool healthcare that we are able to provide for our lizard in the education department, Zinc the Skink, um, and working with the the vets and vet techs and the students and the residents and all together. Such a team. Yeah, to, to help make sure animals have the best care and welfare that they can so and then all the neat stuff that you pointed out so well that we do for care and wellness for the animals that are on habitat that, here at the zoo yeah that is just right on habitat that you can see when you come oh. um we do sometimes try to hide it so it doesn't look like it's that which is also one of the fun things is when you come <laughs> and you see something and you're like that seems like it's a little out of place it probably has a purpose oh, and it's purpose. pretty neat That's right for sure. um so before we sign off completely can you find can you show our guests the digital did they ask the chuck walla so in the desert area, this is an awesome piece of it's art that we have that spans artists. all the way down. But my challenge to you all is if you're able to come to the zoo, is try to find all the lizards in this artwork that we have behind us. And maybe even some of the other animals that you can ID in yep. there. So from a lengthwise shot, Chelsea, so just for giggles, this is set up on purpose. You go from daytime to nighttime to daytime. Light to dark. Mm -hmm. So Digital Friends, thank you once again from your Zoo Adventures team today. Steve was in front of the camera. Leslie was also in front of the camera. And the amazing Chelsea was behind. Have a good day, everybody. We appreciate it. We hope to see you again on Zoo Adventures 10 o'clock on Wednesdays, y'all. Stay safe. We'll see you soon. <laughs>